So this is Ronnie. He's 10 months old, full of beans, <laughs> huge amount of energy. And uh, yeah, he just needs a little bit of help with his socialization. As with most of them at this age, um, they get a little bit over the top with the socialization. And he's a big dog. I mean, he looks like an overgrown teddy bear. He's a big lad. Um, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> he will be clean when he goes home. Oh, it looks like he's got the Joker smile now. All right, <clears throat> this way. So they've all been on the lead and we've done the uh, the introductions where they all walk on the lead, then one's let off, then the other's let off, etc. So we've got all that done. So he knows that uh, we are a pack. So that will solve the problem of him running off and going off and doing his own thing. It won't happen when he's in a pack, they stay together. And uh, the fact that he's got Frank to run at high speed with him means they are both getting a huge adrenaline rush with all this running about. And uh, Frank can be rough, he can take it, uh, and he can give it as well, which is what Ronnie needs. Um, so, there they go. <laughs> I mean, these guys are fast. They're really, really fast. Uh, with only being 10 months old, I'm not gonna do too much of this running about. But this initial energy burst, it's got to come out. Turn sideways. It has to come out. We've got to let this happen um, until he's tired out. The more you restrict them, the more they're going to want to do this. The more you restrict them, the more excited they get when they see another dog. And the more eager they are to get to them. And the more chance they're going to get completely over the top and mess up the socialisation. What will also happen is there will be no recall because they will constantly be in such a a state of mind to get away from you so that they can interact and I do understand especially with a big dog as cute as he is if you have a dog that is a little bit wary and you've got this this guy coming bouncing up to you um, you're gonna uh, you know be a bit wary you're not really gonna know what he's gonna do is he gonna trample on your dog is he gonna knock your dog flying I do understand that um, and what happens is the owners of these bigger dogs or these high energy dogs they start to restrict the uh, the socialization because of the reaction from other people which is understandable however it makes for a bigger problem ultimately so uh, this is where I come in um, not that I'm hard-faced and I don't care about people I do but my priority is without a doubt the dog that's in my care and when my job is to socialize that dog that's exactly what I'm going to do um, I will read the body language of the people I'm approaching I will also read the body language of the dog that they've got um, and what very often happens is once I start to interact with the person the dog calms down because the person's attention is on me and not on their dog then we have a chat and I can generally help with the socialization of their dog if their dog has issues so it's not that I'm being horrible um, all around I'm just trying to help everybody and every dog because like I say the more you restrict the socialization the more you restrict the dog's conversation the more of an issue it will be and the more chance there is that they will get it wrong when they get it wrong they go over the top it turns to aggression and then we have a dog that is difficult to take out so all in all i'm trying to uh, to stop that happening this guy is hilarious <laughs> he is so in love with the world and everything in it and it's wonderful but because he's big and he's a pup and he's pushing the boundaries a little bit at 10 months old. He's starting to mouth a little bit and the mouthing is quite strong. So that's another outlet for this high excitement that he's got. I'm just gonna change direction this way. So yeah, it, uh, he has this high excitement, this high um, anxious state. And for that reason, he's starting to do the mouthing. And like I said, it does come a little bit sharp on the hands he's a little bit full on <clears throat> so I'm throwing in lots of changes of direction and all I'm doing is this way and I'm just trying to say it once okay at the moment Ronnie's not really aware of this kind of behavior the this way so with my two he's oh my goodness what's he got stood? <laughs> come here Ronnie <laughs> come here my darling wait guys wait okay so as you can see <laughs> His, uh, his recall and his, his manners, his, uh, yeah, his obedience, not, not great. <clears throat> it won't be great at this point because, let me explain this to you, the more we try and command them and give them the wait, stay, sit, all that, 
they're in a heightened state of mind and we're trying to control them with words, with our voice, with the energy in our voice. The more we say it, the more intense we get. We're putting emotion into the situation, more emotion into what is already a heightened state of mind, which is gonna make it worse. So when they're at this stage, yeah, I'm gonna attempt the, uh, the obedience commands a couple of times, but I'm not gonna overdo it because they'll get used to ignoring me. And the thing is, as much as they want to, they cannot concentrate and take, uh, you know, and learn tricks and commands when they're in a heightened state of mind. It, it is, it's like a white noise. They just cannot focus. They can't do this. I'm just gonna carry on walking now. So my work today really, this initial first day with Ronnie, is really just to let him socialize, get his energy out. And uh, he's, he's been a little bit full on with Roscoe and Roscoe's put him in his place. And he's not really bothered with Roscoe since. He's having this runabout with Frank. And this is fine because what Ronnie needs to do is get rough um, and play to his heart's content, if you like. Get it out of his system. And he can do this with Frank. Frank's a dog that can take it. I'm obviously an owner that's quite happy with this. Um, so it cuts out the issue of, oh no, you know, what's Ronnie gonna do with this dog that we're approaching? Is he gonna go over the top? Well, he can go over the top with Frank and he can get it out of his system and then he can calm down. When he's calmed down, when it's out of his system, this whole youthful burst is gone. Change direction again. This way. That's when we'll move on to busier places and, uh, and he'll be more in a state of mind where he can take my leadership and listen to my commands. At the moment, there's too much energy going on. I need to just let him be a pup and get this out of his system. Um, but this <laughs> is absolutely gorgeous. He is like a huge teddy bear. He's brilliant. As you can see, Roscoe's keeping his eye on the situation, but he's staying out of the way, leaving the pups to it. Let them do what they need to do. Uh, that's beautiful. So this is my day today. It's a good full on day. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to try and get some really, really beautiful photos, and I'm sure I will because this guy's gorgeous. Before I even got out of the car, I'd opened the door, and there was two ladies just put their dogs in the car, and uh, they saw him straight away. They come over. I felt like the most popular person in the world. Straight away, they're over. Then somebody else pulled up. They came over. I'd not even got him out of the car at this point. What is he? Oh, isn't he beautiful? Um, so yeah, and his owner has told me that this is sort of one of the problems, really. When she's out and he's so excited when he sees people, the problem is they want to come over and say hello to him and give him lots of attention. So they're giving him the attention when he's in this heightened state of mind, when he's over the top. So it's really hard to control it and to, to train him how to sort of meet and greet because people are generally so overwhelmed just with what he looks like. So I get that, I totally understand. So uh, anyway, I will see you later guys. Have a good day.